In today's video, I'm gonna go over uh, a project that I'm slowly editing to make things a little bit easier for the barrier of entry for people getting into CAN bus or trying to reverse engineer information on a CAN bus um, that's using signed and unsigned data types um, to, to basically ease the process a little bit basically get you get you a little bit more information up front as quick as possible um, in this example um, I'll be taking um, can utils data it's a I call it socket can logs uh, log file format from Linux uh, I'll eventually port it over to peak uh, vbox motec can inspector um, and so forth uh, to, to help interpret all the data types or all the log file formats that that are commonly uh, used on the market. Um, tonight, I'm going to just go over a quick uh, example here. So I'm going to run uh, this program. Let me go ahead and clear it. Essentially, what we're going to do is we're just going to I'm just going to run the log file. Uh, this log file was me driving a 2008 Toyota Camry to the grocery store, and so uh, we'll we'll see what we'll see what we can interpret from it. Just purely assessing the graphical uh, output that we get when we present it with a CAN bus log file input. Go and run it. Let's go to the desktop here, drive to Kroger's.log. It is running. It takes, depending on how big the log file is, it'll take some time to run through it. Um, essentially what it's gonna do is slice and dice the log file based on message ID to determine what information is embedded in the log file. And here we go, it starts. It does do them in a numerically increase, increasing format. So like your lowest arbitration ID will be the first one you see and so forth. So it's gonna be presented in the uh, figures file here. And then we have clusters and it's done. So let's go ahead and look at the uh, figures here and see if we can see anything. And correlate any information to uh, let's see, uh, any signals we expect. So 0B0, zero zero, I, I click on it. Um, essentially, we can tell that it looks like uh, this right here would be speed of some sort or throttle, perhaps. And we can see right here, let me uh, maximize this screen here. I'm going to close this one. We can see right here that you can see the data. The data increases all the way up. So the first two bytes essentially are right here. And then we have two more bytes that increase up here. So I would say that we have a signal that's in the first two bytes in the second set. So bytes, uh, if you read your indexes as zero, zero and one and two and three. Um, and they both look about the same. So it could be thr throttle position. It looks more like wheel or uh, vehicle speed or a speed of some sort based on the information I can see. Let's go to the next one. Uh, B2 looks like uh, I'm expecting these two to be all four wheel speeds, both front wheel speeds and then rear wheel speeds. That's my expectation. Uh, zero B4, um, it's too noisy to tell, but we can see that the slice and dice points uh, end up being about right here, um, down here as well, and then right here. So we could, we could potentially look at this data and break it down a little bit further and try to analyze a little bit deeper. But from the graphical interface, well, there's not much we can, uh, we can make of it. Here, uh, potentially throttle position or brake pressure, and it, the the slice and dicing here on the last one may be a little off, but but yeah, uh, we can see that we have essentially a signal that that wants to slice here, signal that wants to slice here, and so forth. Um, this one right here, I expect this one to be a signed value. So what, what that means is the information is changing to like basically be a bunch of ones and then each zero falling off reduces the number by one. If this value right here, if this bit right here is on. Scrolling through, we see some more data. Um, don't know exactly. But it's the first two bytes. This one right here, I expect it to be more along potentially gear. Um, when it drops up here, it may be like um, maybe the part, you know, um, the shifter. Not too, not too certain, but 
Um, this this really this this right here kind of screams that it's going back and forth in gears, perhaps, or it is a not commonly changing signal. Not much we can make of this one. This one right here, um, I would have to look deeper, analyze it a little bit further on the first two bytes. Not sure on the on the rest. Let's keep going. Not sure, not sure on this one either. But we can see that it has a definitive slice point, um, and a definitive slice point here too. Three B zero. Not much I can make of that one. Not much I can make of that one either. So this one right here, maybe um, brake pressure, throttle. It's hard to say, but it's only three bytes long. Hard to say. Hard to say if anything's valuable there. This one right here, um, probably coolant temp of some sort, perhaps. Maybe oil pressure or oil temperature. Uh, this one up here, um, I want to say steering wheel angle, but I'm not 100% certain. Not much there, not much there, not much there, not much there. Not much to work with there, not much to work with there. This one as well looks, uh, I want, it, it's hard to say, pro, you know, whether it's steering wheel angle or um, some type of IMU, accelerometer value, jaw rate or Excel or uh, in, in some in some vector 399 nothing valuable there nothing valuable there nothing valuable there and this one right here it's hard to say could be a temperature of some sort very slow moving signal nothing valuable there nothing valuable there and nothing valuable there 638 all right, let's see what we got in clusters, because clusters, what it tries to do is it tries to correlate, correlate these values and go, these values align quite well. So we see that um, this is B0 and B2. Those all four line up. It clustered them together. So that's why I assume those are wheel speeds. Um, and then 2C4 and 2D0, those look like very similar channels as well. So they could be basically a redundant signal uh, for a different device. Um, I'm hoping to get this uh, presented in an executable format here soon. Um, but I realize that most people probably don't use socket cam format and like a peak pecan is probably the most common, commonly used tool for logging and logging and viewing. So I'm trying to work on the peak pecan trace to get it uh, correlated properly. Uh, but it's going to take some time because they have about eight different file formats they use for trace files. So you have to do it uh, based on which version of the trace file exists. But nonetheless, this kind of shows a kind of a clear picture um, to try to get up to speed quickly with finding information uh, in an efficient way um, using just log files. So, you know, and you can do this remotely as long as the log files present it to you. You know, like this is what I do when people send me uh, send me files and they're like, hey, I'm trying to find brake pressure. Can you help me try to find brake pressure? I'm like, yes, uh, just start, start the car. Don't even run the car. Just key on engine off and just... I want you to sit there for 30 seconds and I want you to stab the brake pedal like your life depends on it about 20 times and then I want you to wait 30 seconds and then done with the log. So I'm looking for something that shows stabs dead in the middle of it and we're that's that's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, there it is. That's what I see. So I'll do, then slice and dice, find the see if I can find some values that make sense of it and we're we're off to the races. But nonetheless, um, if you found this valuable, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.